Investing in oneself is crucial for financial success. It requires discipline, persistence, and personal development. While investing in markets is important, it's equally vital to prioritize self-investment through education and skills. There are no shortcuts to wealth. It's essential to align your actions and mindset towards your financial goals. In the financial journey, self-investment goes hand in hand with market investments. By investing in yourself, you equip yourself with the tools and knowledge needed to navigate the financial landscape. Discipline and persistence are key traits that will help you achieve long-term financial success. Take the time to invest in personal development. It will pay off in your financial journey. Remember, wealth is not built overnight. It requires consistent effort and dedication. Investing in oneself is a lifelong process. Continuously seek opportunities for growth and improvement. In conclusion, prioritize self-investment alongside market investments to achieve long-term financial success. In the realm of investing, knowledge is indeed power. Today, we delve into the insights from two noteworthy books, Common Sense Investing and The Dander Investor. Common Sense Investing, penned by John Bogle, the CEO of Vanguard, advocates for the simplicity and efficacy of investing in index funds for the long haul. Bogle emphasizes that successful investing doesn't necessitate specialized knowledge or intelligence, but rather a rational framework for decision-making and the discipline to stick to it. He discusses market behaviors, fundamental finance principles, and the importance of maintaining control over one's investing psychology. The Dander Investor underscores the notion that the best investments might be hiding in plain sight, aligning with our daily interactions and knowledge. The book suggests that ordinary investors can indeed have an edge over Wall Street professionals by leveraging their personal experiences and insights into their investment strategies. It's about recognizing potential in the familiar and utilizing that knowledge to make informed investment decisions. Both books, while differing in their approaches, underscore the importance of informed, disciplined investing. Whether it's through the steady, long-term approach advocated by Bogle or the more intuitive, experience-driven strategy discussed in The Dander Investor, the key takeaway remains, successful investing is accessible to all, provided it's approached with diligence, understanding, and a steadfast commitment to a chosen strategy. Join us as we explore the key takeaways from these two investment guides and navigate the path to informed, strategic investing. Intro Over the last few years, I have read almost every book that exists on money and investing, from the classic books that cover the fundamentals like Rich Dad Poor Dad, to the psychology-focused ones like Think and Grow Rich, to the books that go into investing like One Up on Wall Street. So in this video, I'm going to break down the key things I have learned and taken away from all the books I've read. Some of them really surprised me because they contradicted what I learned from my day job in investment banking, and I'm curious to know if you shared the same perspective. So let's start. Rich Dad Poor Dad off with the basics and the most popular one, and that is Rich Dad Poor Dad. This is the classic of classics, and I can definitely see why it's so popular. It covers the foundations for finance and money that isn't taught to us in school. The premise of this book is based around the author's two dads, his biological father, who recommends getting a secure job, taking the traditional path, and retiring with a pension, and then there's a second dad, who is his best friend's father, and he was a high school dropout. He built a business empire and was all about independent thinking and buying assets that make money for you. And this book is what introduced me to the concept of assets and liabilities. Assets, as it explains, are things that put money into your pocket. This could be anything from investments like stocks and shares, real estate, side hustles, or businesses that bring in extra income. On the other hand, liabilities are things that take money out of your pocket and they lose value over time, and these are the things you want to avoid, especially in the years that you're trying to build yourself up. He says that when you think of your home as a primary investment, you end up paying more for it and buying more house than you need, and that sucks up a lot of your money in monthly installments that could have been used more profitably somewhere else. So this is a really good book to begin your personal finance journey, explains the core concepts in a very digestible way, and emphasizes the importance of giving each pound or each dollar a purpose and viewing it as an employee that is constantly working for you. 
So this mindset clarifies the trade-off between present expenses and future income because every dollar or every pound spent today is one that ultimately won't be able to work for you later down the road. Cash Flow Quadrant Then he has a follow-up book which is the Cash Flow Quadrant. So there are hundreds of ways to earn money beyond the conventional 9-to-5 job. Most people think that a stable job is the only legit and realistic way to financial security, but this book will paint a whole new picture. It makes you really understand the limitations of an I-25 job and how you don't have to be tied to a desk for the rest of your life in order to make money and be financially free. In fact, it takes that one step further and says how relying purely on your job might just be the worst thing you do when it comes to making money and seeking financial freedom. The cash flow quadrant that he discusses represents the four ways to earn money. It's being an employee, so working a 9-to-5 job, being self-employed or having a small business. So for example, if you're a dentist, a freelancer, and then there's being a big business owner. And then finally, being an investor. And in this book, he talks about how you can use this concept to achieve financial freedom and which of these paths are most likely going to lead you down that road. It's a good book to get your mind ticking with ideas, but when it comes to actionable takeaways and things you can implement, I would recommend. The 4-Hour Work Week This book is called The 4-Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss. At first, I was skeptical about the idea of a 4-Hour Work Week. It sounded too good to be true. However, as I delved deeper into the book, I realized that it's not about working less, but about working smarter. In the book, Tim Ferriss explains how anyone can live a retired millionaire lifestyle by building their own business, automating it, and collecting income as they go. This allows them to live their best life without having to wait for retirement. When you read the book, you'll see that something initially far-fetched and out of reach is actually more achievable than you think. It opens your eyes to the possibilities of earning money outside the traditional job setup. The book, Cash Flow Quadrant, complements the 4-hour work week by illustrating the possibilities of earning money outside the traditional job setup. These two books go hand in hand. In summary, the 4-hour work week teaches you how to work smarter, not harder, and live a fulfilling life by building your own business and automating it. It's about achieving financial freedom and living life on your own terms. The Millionaire Fast Lane The author of this book makes an interesting point that there is no such thing as getting rich easy, but there is such a thing as getting rich quick. He discusses the three paths in financial life. The first path is the sidewalk, where you repeatedly spend more than you earn, trapping yourself in a cycle of living paycheck to paycheck. The second path is the slow lane, which involves taking the safer route in life by getting good grades, getting a good job, saving a portion of your paycheck, and investing it to eventually retire at 65 years old or older. The issue with the slow lane is that it requires trading your time for money. Finally, there's the fast lane, which involves leveraging your time to create passive income. This means investing your time in work that generates passive income by creating a product or system capable of earning income long after your initial time investment. The fast lane expands your income potential. What I really like about this book is that the author keeps it very real. While he acknowledges the possibility of getting rich quick, he emphasizes that it requires a lot of hustle, hard work, and discipline. Getting rich quick is actually an accumulation of years of experience and knowledge. It's not an easy or scammy process. You can grow rich you either love it or you hate it. There's hardly a middle ground with this book. I've come across people who felt that this book was all fluff and didn't really deliver on what it promised. They expected a clear actionable road map to wealth and so they were quite disappointed when they didn't find that. On the other hand, there are people who credit this book with transforming their mindset and their financial lives. For them, it was like this light bulb moment that helped them unlock their limiting money beliefs and figure out what was holding them back. So what's my take on it? When it comes to success, I believe mindset is everything. If you approach life with a scarcity mindset, thinking that there's never enough and that money is hard to come by, then that is what you'll experience. On the other hand, 
If you believe in abundance and that you're capable of achieving wealth, your actions will align to those beliefs and lead you towards success. But, and there is a big but, mindset alone is not enough. You can have the most positive abundance-oriented mindset in the world, but if you're not taking any action, you're not going to get very far. It's like having the best tools in the world but never using them to build anything. You need both the right mindset and then also consistent focused action. So if you're looking to improve the former and you're open to exploring your beliefs and digging deep into your mindset, then this book is for you. If you're not a fan of the philosophical approach and you're looking for a step-by-step -step guide to building wealth, then you might want to skip it and go for some of the other ones that I mentioned in this video. When it comes to the getting rich part. The Intelligent Investor read when he was 19 by Warren Buffett, The Intelligent Investor is still hailed as the best book on investing ever written. The principles within are timeless, illustrating how investing over the long term does not require specialist knowledge or deep insight. It simply requires a rational framework for decision-making and the discipline not to let emotions override this framework. The book covers market behaviors, basic financial fundamentals, and maintaining control of psychology, providing a foundational knowledge for any aspiring investor. The Girls That Invest A Modern Take On Investing, The Girls That Invest, is a fantastic starting point for beginners who want to understand why they should invest, the basics and terminology of investing, and how to find their investing personality type to create a portfolio that matches it. Written by a friend of the narrator, this book demystifies investing, making it accessible and understandable for anyone looking to start their investment journey.